This video is going to cover how to center work in a four jaw lathe chuck. But first, let's take a quick look at the three jaw chuck and then we can see the differences. Right now we're looking at a, a standard three jaw chuck and if you look, you can see when you turn the, the handle, all the jaws move simultaneously in or out. And this should, in general, help center stuff fairly close. So, but a, a typical three jaw chuck has a uh, basically a, a precision of, of maybe two three thousandths, maybe a couple more, where where it'll be off center. Uh, this particular one is not really that great. It's probably off six or seven thousandths from dead center. So so if I crank something up tight in here, spin it, it'll wobble six or seven thousandths, and then uh, you can turn something and it'll be perfectly round. But if you have to take it out of the chuck and then put it back in, you won't be able to line it back up with the part that uh, you know, part that you need to. So you could turn something perfectly round. If you have to take it out, say cut it, put it back in, then make a groove. Now the groove will be off center, won't be concentric with the part you did the first time. So so that's one of the reasons why well, you may want to use a four jaw chuck because of the four jaw chuck. You can get stuff exactly on center, take it out, put it back in, follow the same procedure and get right back on center again. So now we're going to move over to the four jaw. Okay, now we're looking at the four jaw chuck. We've labeled the four different jaws with numbers one, two, three, and four. And you can see if I uh, crank on one of the jaw adjusters here, like number one, only number one jaw moves. The same thing's true with two, three, and four. So first thing you need to do, if you want to center something up, is you put the uh, put your stock in. We're just using a piece of round bar here. You put it in. And see these lines here? We're going to try and align the outer edge of the jaws so they're roughly equally spaced. So this one's not too far off. Looks like right now we're right around the second line down this one also right around the second line down likewise here and then on the fourth one we'll bring number one back up to the top and, and right now so it's pretty snug so so this is where we're going to start from I'm going to move the camera so we can get a better view of the uh, the gauges and stuff while we do this Okay, now we've got a good view of what's going on here. So you can see we've got uh, jaw number one at the top, three at the bottom, and two and four left and right. And I've put the dial gauge here on top of the uh, top of our bar and lined it up with jaw number one. So right now we're reading, you know, 65, 7, 67 thousandths. But I'm going to zero the indicator here. And what we're going to do, we're going to use jaws one and three to move the bar up and down and two and four to move it left and right and once we've centered up and down between one and three and left and right between two and four it'll be centered all the way around so right now we're on jaw number one at the top we've got the dial indicator set to zero I'm going to go 180 degrees and bring jaw three to the top I'm going to see where we are so now jaws three is at the top and looks like we went about, not quite 40 thousandths left, 38 let's say. And the bar went down, because if I lift this up, you see it goes back to the top. So what that means is 38 thousandths were 19 thousandths off center, because if we push this down 19, and we swing it around, the other one will have moved up 19, and then we'll, uh, we'd be on center. So what I'm gonna do here, because we're low on this side, I'm going to loosen jaw three a little bit. I'm going to swing jaw one back up to the top. And then I'm going to try and push down. And see, we've got a little bit of a issue here. All right, I'm going back to zero. I'm going to try and push this down basically 19 thousandths 
So let's call that 19 there. Now if I bring it back around, so jaw three's at the top. We're still off a little bit. So let's re-zero with jaw three at the top. Go back to one. Now one's at the top and we're, we're 11 thousandths high. So you can see we're definitely closer than the 40 thousandths we're off to begin with. So I'm going to push down with this one. I like to go about half that distance. Looks like there's about enough slop in jaw three to let us do that. So now we're at five thousandths there. Going to re-zero. Swing back around to jaw three. And then we're pretty much right at zero. So we got the jaw one three, which was originally left and right centered up so let's go back to two and four i'm sorry one and three was originally top bottom so let's go back to two and four and get the left right so here we got set it at zero with jaw two at the top swing around to jaw four and we're not quite ten thousandths low so i'm gonna loosen this just a hair Go back around to two, which was the one that was high. We're going to push it down about half of that ten thousandths. That's pretty good there. Let's re zero, make it easy to do the math. And we'll come back around. Let's see, we're off a half a thousandth there. We're back to right on at the opposite jaw. So basically between one and three, we got about 2,000. So let's go ahead and clean that up. We'll go back over to three, which is the one that was high. Gonna just push that down just a hair. Hope there's enough play in the jaw. Okay, and now we'll give it a spin. So maybe got a half a thousandths. There you can see we are within, within half a thousandths of dead center. So now you can turn, do whatever you need to do. But you turn on, turn something out here on the end, you know it's within half a thousandth of being concentric with this part back here. If you take this piece out of the chuck, have to do some other work, you can bring it back, put it back in, follow this exact same procedure, and know that you'll get back right within within whatever tolerance you set up here. Granted, we could iterate a couple more times and get this down so the needle didn't even move at all and uh, if it was super critical you could probably even get a little bit more accurate dial indicator uh, but basically that's the whole procedure and it is now dead center and a four jaw chuck